So this is a little demo of the skin editor. This is our little application. Um, basically it's one page but it's functional and we're going to try and skin it to make it look different. So, switch over to JDeveloper and in your view controller now you'll have an option to do new ADF skin. So you can give a name to your skin and you can specify which skin you're extending and this wizard not only invokes the skin editor and creates the CSS file, it actually configures your project to be um, skinnable. So you'll see a, a new Trinidad skins files and a new entry in the Trinidad config file. Let's save everything. The one piece that is still missing, especially while you're developing the skin, is to go into the WebXML file and under the context initializing parameters you want to add this thing which basically means um, we don't want ADF faces currently to compress the content so you can see the specific syntax in my page click save and you might want to rerun the page now um, we're not going to rerun it now we're going to actually edit the skin okay so let's see um, how can you get the maximum bang for the buck for your skinning effort that would be to go into the images tab of your skin. Okay. An ADF faces application consists of a lot of images um, for things like backgrounds and tabs and various icons and things like that. Um, and one of the fastest way to change the look and feel of your application is to change the color scheme that is used in your application. Let's see how you can do it quite uh, uh, quite fast way. We're going to basically do um, something here by choosing different colors for each one of the types of um, backgrounds that we have. Now that I'm trying to keep all my color selection in the same um, area or the same column basically this gives you much more consistency in the way that your user interface looks like Another thing to note is that as you're doing this, you can see the images being already changed on the visual aspect over there. So we can see it over here. Okay, and I think that's basically it. Once you did all of those, don't forget to click Apply to Skin. This actually goes over, generates the images, and also creates a, a lot of entries in your CSS file. So if you actually go to the source tab now, you see a lot of entries that define the various images as well as the various colors that you chose to be your default colors for various aspects of your page. At this stage you can actually save your work and you can rerun your page. Even without rerunning you can already see the effect happening in the visual editor. So here's your new UI basically it behaves just like before but the whole UI experience is different compare this to this alright so this was the overall color scheme now let's see how we can skin specific components and to do that one thing that would be helpful is to have Firebug installed on your browser that's a Firefox plugin and then you can go for example to an input text, right click on it and say inspect element. This will show you in Firebug the specific class that is being used to format this area of the component. Okay? So you can see it's AF input text content. Now let's go back to the skin editor and see how we can customize this class. If we look down in our skin editor we can find the skin the input text component now note that we don't want to just skin the AF input text but we want to skin in a section of this component which is the content remember what we saw in the um, file bug um, display refer to the content of this component so if you want to change the background image for example or the font image you can basically do it here directly changing it so instead of actually directly changing it, I will um, make you notice that there is a little blue arrow icon to the side of the component. This indicates that this value actually comes in an inherited format from another location. Okay? So it's also in here. If you hover over it, you can see exactly where is the value derived from. 
And because what we want to do is actually change the look and feel, not just of the input components, but also of the uh, date component, for example, okay, we want it to be consistent, we probably want to change the place where um, we inherit the value from. To do that, simply click on the side here, okay, and click Go to Declaration. This takes you into the overall definition for uh, multiple components. So this is what we call a global selector. Okay, let's enhance this a little bit. And you can see it's part of our global selectors and it's indicated with the uh, colon alias indication in here. So this is where we can go around and change, for example, the background of our component. So we don't want a background image. Okay, so we're going to switch this to none. And then we can specify that the background color for all our um, text fields of various kinds would be this color. Okay, you can see the effect happening here. You can see the various components that are going to be influenced in this drop-down list, and you can see the effect that is going to happen as well here. Let's save everything. Okay, go back to our page and simply reload it. As you can see now, all of our components, all the text fields, are with a pink background. Okay. One thing to notice is that we also change the color here of the filters. Right? So the filters are a specific case for input components, and if we don't want the filter to change, we can go back to our input text definition in the visual edit, in the skin editor, and we can see something called descendant selectors. And one of those descendant selectors is the column filter selector, okay, which is what you can see over here. Okay. So we can specify that specifically in this situation, we don't want to inherit the default value, but rather we want to specify a different color. For example, we can keep this one to the window color. Clicking Save now and going back will allow us to see the change over here. The skin editor can be used not just to change um, specific colors, we can also change things like fonts. Okay. So again, if we look at the content, okay, we can see the default font. Again, it's being inherited from a specific place. Okay. And we can go over to that place and modify the default font to be another one. Let's change it to another font. Okay. We can also make the font um, style to be italic. Save those changes. Reload and you can see the effects here, as well as here. One more thing that you can change in the skin editor beyond fonts, colors, is also um, specific strings that are being used in your application. So for example, you can see this detach button, and the detach option is also here in the menu. Okay. So if we want to change this title, okay, the skin editor, when we created a new skin, also created for us a new properties file, skin bundle properties, that we can use to change specific strings. You can find the specific strings names in the skinning guide, tag guide, and then you can change, um, for example, the detach menu item, label, and button this way. Once you save this and rerun the page, You can now see the new title here, as well as here. Functionality, it's still the same. So, in about five minutes, we got from this user interface to this user interface, changing title, fonts, colors, and overall look and feel using the new skin editor.